Hi friends and welcome back to another Java FX tutorial. In this episode we're going to look at Scene Builder and how to build a simple FXML application. Building an FXML application in Eclipse is a little different than building a, just a regular code application. So that's the first thing we're going to take a look at. Let's create a new project, File, New, choose Other. It is a Java FX project, as always. Click Next. I'm going to call this one Scene Builder Intro. And click Next. I'll add the Java FX libraries to the class path. User library. I'll choose Java FX 16. Click Finish, click Next, and this is where we can configure the FXML application. We can choose a package name or simply accept the default. I'll leave it at the default for now. We'll choose Language. Normally, we leave it at None when we're just producing a Java FX code application. But in this case, since we're using it to produce an FXML application, we'll choose FXML as the language. We have two file names that are presented to us, sample and sample controller. In an FXML application, the file name that they're referencing here is the FXML view, and the controller is going to be a Java class that actually responds to events from the view, as in the model view controller pattern. So we're going to get a sample.fxml file and a sample.controller.java file created for us as part of this application. And that's all thanks to the EFX Clips plugin. So let's click Finish. We'll open up the project. And here is what we are given. We're given a main file and an application.css. These are the things that we're already familiar with from our regular JavaFX applications. And the other two files, the sample.fxml and the sample controller, are related to the view that we're going to create using Scene Builder. To begin editing our sample.fxml file in Scene Builder, we can right click on the file name and open with Scene Builder. This is the Scene Builder user interface. Let's just take a moment to explore the user interface in Scene Builder. On the left, at the top, we have the library, which includes all of the containers and controls that we're going to be using to build our user interface. So at the top, we have containers, and these containers are, the, for the most part, the layout panes that we, uh, that we would wrap all of our other controls in to form our scene graph. The anchor pane, the border pane, the flow pane, the grid pane, the horizontal box and the vertical box and so on, as well as the controls like button, label, list view, and the table view. We have some that are created by glue on and we have menus. We have another one labeled miscellaneous, which is, I guess, everything left over. We have shapes like arcs and circles and ellipses, polygons. We also have all of the charts, the area chart, bar chart, bubble chart, line chart, etc. And in the middle, we have our document, which currently is just composed of our root pane, which is a border pane, and that was selected when we created the project. And at the bottom on this left-hand side, we have a controller, and the controller is a sample controller. And again, that was selected as the name when we created the project, and it's linked to this FXML document. In the middle, we have our canvas where we will be dragging and dropping all of our user interface elements. On the right, we have the inspector, and this is where we find the details of individual nodes that we've dragged and dropped onto our scene graph, a section labeled properties. We have another layout and a third code. And we're gonna see a little bit more of these as we create our simple user interface. So let's create a user interface. For this simple user interface, I'll just display the hierarchy. We show a border pane, and in the border pane, I'm going to create a vertical box that will contain a button and a label. So let's go to the library, and first I'm going to add the vertical box. So I'll just search for that, VB. I'm going to drag and drop that in the center area of our border pane. You'll see that now appear in the middle of our screen, the default size. Then I'm going to search for a button. 
Also then drag and drop that into the vertical box. And last, a label. And also drag and drop that into the vertical box. So these two controls will form our user interface. Now let's go over to the inspector and look at uh, the properties tab. Select vertical box and I'm going to change the alignment to center. So everything then moves to the center of the vertical box. Then to the layout and I'm going to set some margin of 10 pixels and also some padding of 10. Next, let's move on to the button. Button as well, I'm going to set margin of 10. And then the label, let's make that a little wider. Probably should do the same with our border pane. Oh, the label, now I will go to the Properties tab and select the alignment as Center and remove the text label so that that is blank. Button, I will change the text to Click Me. I think one last thing that I want to do is to go to the code section and enter an ID for each of these two controls, the button and the label. We enter an ID for the controls that we want to have accessible in our controller. And those are injected using FXML annotation. And I'll show you that in a moment. The button, I'm going to have an ID of button. The label, an ID of label. And the button, I'm going to have it execute a method when it is clicked. And we'll have to create that method in our controller, but the method's name is going to be on button clicked. And I think that's all that there is to our user interface. So we'll save what we've done. We can do a quick preview, show in a preview window, which shows our stage and our scene graph, which has a button and a label, which we can't see. Nothing happens at this point because the handler hasn't been created in our controller. Close, we'll move back to Eclipse and go to our sample controller. In the sample controller, I want to create variables for those two elements that we added IDs to in our FXML file. So we'll annotate those with the FXML annotation. Private button button. Private label label and the method protected void on button clicked and it accepts an action event This is the method that's going to be executed when the button is clicked. So the FXML annotation allows the injection to take place from the FXML file, which is our user interface, back into the controller. So the FXML file provides the visual part of the application and the controller provides the business logic. When the button is clicked, I'm simply going to let that be reflected by changing the text on the label. On button clicked, we'll say label, set text button clicked right click on the project run as Java application choose main there's our user interface click the button and our label changes to button clicked those are the basics of creating an FXML application if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos when I release new content. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.